it started. Okay, so the first update that I have for you guys is that our state prevention website has moved. So we have a new website for prevention and it's underneath our um, behavioral health website. So just know that we're moving, we're getting rid of that www.prevention.nd.gov and it's now going to be behavioralhealthnd.gov prevention. And you can find it and get to it on our behavioral health website. There'll be a tab for it. But when you actually get into the website, you can now browse by topic right away up front, like alcohol, opioids, whatever. Um, you can browse by your role. Like if you are part of a community organization, an educator, parent or caregiver, you can find resources and information that way. Um, but real quick, I'll kind of cover the alcohol one because it pertains to most of you. Um, it works. It was just working. So when you click on alcohol, it talks a little bit about what evidence based prevention is and things like that. You have the prevention basics video right at the front here and one of these links. Um, and then you can go into the strategies. So I know that you guys are all working on underage drinking or adult binge drinking strategies, so you can choose one or the other. Um, it talks a little bit about so when you click on underage drinking, it talks a little bit about our intervening variables like high retail access, high social access, what those are. And then it asks, does your community have like high retail access? Does it have high social access? And this is how you find the strategies. So you click on that and a drop down comes and then you have like social host liability law. A lot of you are working on this one. Um, it talks about what it is. It holds people accountable for knowingly providing an environment where underage drinking or drug use can occur. Um, it talks about frequently asked questions. There's even implementation toolkits here. So like social host liability toolkit. Um, it talks about how to implement this strategy. So there's a lot of resources here that are specific to uh, that social host policy and all of our other strategies that we kind of promote um, within our prevention work. So just know that's here. This is the website that's changing. Um, we still haven't figured out how to do the, uh, what is it? The um, free resources. So we're still trying to figure that out. So just know there will be some information and some changes coming to the free resources website that we have. Uh, the next thing we can go over it is National Prevention Week. So it is uh, May 9th through the 14th. We have the Prevention Week Toolkit online. So you've seen a couple of my emails about that. And um, today is prevention, preventing suicide. Everyone plays a role. And then you can find all the different resources here in these tabs. So if you haven't gone here yet, there's social media resources. Um, today is this one right here, and you can just take these and post them on your Facebook pages for social media. So just to know that is going out. And at the end of National Prevention Week, we are going to be sending out a survey link, and we want to hear from you about how we did with this toolkit. Were there resources that were missing? Were there resources that were hard to find? Um, were there resources that were hard to use? We'll send that out at the end of the week and we'll kind of ask if there was anything that we could do better. So please look for that please. survey. I'll be the one that sends that out. Um, the next thing is the parents lead survey. So we're still doing the parents lead survey. We're going to kind of keep it open um, for a little while yet. We're going to probably keep it open till the end of school because we're using the schools to kind of promote this. We're also promoting it on our social media and through other avenues. But our main source of communication is through the schools and we're getting a lot of positive feedback from you guys as well as parents and stuff like that with this survey going out and we're actually generating quite a bit of responses so using the schools to actually post this survey or get the survey out has been really useful and, and it's really been working for us so just make sure you're promoting that we would like to get a few more responses and things like that talk to your school administrators ask them to you know send it out to the parents um, do what you can to help us out because whatever information we get is going to help guide our programming, which ultimately guides your programming and it really helps us out. So uh, last update is we put out a request for proposals for a tribal survey and the tribal survey is going to cover substance use as well as perceptions around substance use. And we are hoping to start working on this or award a contract within the month. And then we'll start working with our tribal prevention coordinators to implement this survey. And we're hoping to have everything done by the end or by the middle of next year. And this is a, a great success if we complete this because um, our tribes are lacking in data, specifically around adult substance use. Like 
right now they have very little information to go on to guide their programming. We're hoping that after this survey, they'll have a lot more information to help guide their prevention work and even help them secure additional funding. So just know that we're working there. Um, we're also working on our own state tribal, I mean, sorry, our own state community readiness survey. And that is in the works of being drafted. So we have the survey instrument already done. Um, we will start collecting responses here, hopefully by the end of the month or early next month. So just know that you might have to, well, I don't know how the, I forgot how the survey instrument is going to be, um, how, how, what is it called? Uh, I can't remember, whatever. I don't know how they're going to collect the responses, to be honest. I think it was going to be through letters or websites. So just know that's how that's going to be done. So you might even get selected to participate in that, just so you're aware. Uh, and that's what I have for state updates. To Katie or Amy, do you have any state updates for the grantees? Everything going good with reporting and stuff like that, Katie? You getting what you yep. need from the grantees on reporting? Yep. Good. Got okay. it. All right, so with that, you guys, we'll turn it over to you guys. Um, again, just kind of keep your presentations kind of short and brief, just because we have 15 to go through in about uh, an hour and 15 minutes. So Cavalier, if you want to start us off. We'll kind of just have you share your PowerPoint and walk I'm us sorry through. I got kicked off for a minute. Are you talking to me, Tom? Oh, yep, yep. Oh, OK. <laughs> you can start us off again. All right. Next time we'll switch the, the we'll switch everybody around. <laughs> Is my screen sharing? Sure is. Yep, we can see it. OK, perfect. I've been having lots of teams trouble lately. So I'm Steph Welsh from Cavalier County Health District way in farther, far northern, northeastern North Dakota. And the focus of our grant is kind of unique. I think we're one of only a couple counties that's focus is adult binge drinking. Let me go to a slide. So sorry. Is adult binge drinking. Um, and so our, in, our issues that we found when we looked locally at, at um, our community and alcohol use is that we had few events um, without alcohol, few restrictions at the events that do have alcohol. So it was kind of a free for all. Um, very little knowledge that binge drinking is an issue and what it looks like and how healthy or drinking should look. Um, and um, we are concerned that over COVID too, that drinking in the home increased as well. Um, and we have a really strong social norm of um, binge drinking in particular. And so we wanted to reduce uh, those instances of binge drinking and lack of local controls and policies around events um, and have been working for a couple of years on that. Um, so some of the things we're doing, um, we'll start out with uh, communications and so we have lots of communications that we've done pretty much constantly every month uh, we have um, and i'll go into these as we go forward but we have um, billboards movie theater trailers radio newspaper um, we do a quarterly newsletter um, and we have that printed and inserted in our weekly newspaper as an insert kind of like you would do a grocery store flyer um, we had our local newspaper, weekly newspaper, cease publication in December, which was a little bit of a hiccup for us. Nobody saw it coming. Uh, we didn't have a newspaper for a little bit, but a um, our local radio um, station uh, media company picked that up and began publishing a new newspaper. Thank goodness. So we we had to kind of start from square one with building those relationships and figuring out how that would work, but it is going really, really well. Um, our newsletter is inserted, um, like I said, quarterly into the newspaper, as well as we publish it on our website and our Facebook, and we email it to our coalitions and our elected officials. Uh, I really positive um, that came out of um, this newspaper transition while it was painful was that they have a little bit bigger footprint than the old weekly newspaper targeted mainly Cavalier County and, and the Borderland Press is a three county uh, footprint. So we're hoping to have a little bit broader reach which is nice as they build their subscribership we usually try to insert into our newsletter at least one al alcohol prevention article if you look um, we have a little something on the bottom right corner on nd tip which we've also been promoting through other venues lately um, 
We also are fortunate that that weekly newspaper previously, the Cavalier County Republican, gave us a weekly health tip. It's like a small boxed ad. Um, and the Borderland Press agreed to do that going forward, which was fabulous. So we get a small, like, one to two sentence boxed ad for free every week. Uh, and we usually try to have at least one of those a month be about uh, substance use prevention. So some examples we hear, we have some on recovery and uh, treatment. We have one on uh, being safe on St. Patrick's Day, since that's a high risk drinking event. Uh, we have one on drunk driving. And those are just some examples of the health tips we do in that newspaper. We are also very, very fortunate that our, we have local radio as well. And they give us a 45 second ad that runs twice a day. Um, the topic stays the same for seven days in a row. Um, so we tape a weekly topic uh, for the radio station and we try to have one of those be a month. One of those a month be about um, our adult binge drinking prevention if we can. And so here's a couple examples. Uh, the one on the left is just kind of that speak volumes message uh, about um, what is standard drink size and do you know how much you're drinking? And then the one on the right is again, St. Patrick's Day since that fell in this last quarter and is a high risk drinking event. We hosted regional uh, district or not regional, but district basketball tournaments in our community. So we also worked with the school to have a parents lead ad in those um, programs that went out every day of the district tournaments. Um, we do social media messaging. We have both um, our Cavalier County Health District has a social media page that really gained um, followers during the COVID pandemic. That was one good thing that came out of COVID, I guess. Uh, but we also have a Northeast uh, Public Health Regional Collaborative that has a Facebook page, and we we try and um, also utilize those. Uh, if you look, we um, work harder, not smarter, so we rip off a lot of social media messaging from partners. So we have an example of something we thought that looked really good from Graham Forks um, that we used. We take stuff from uh, Speak Volumes, uh, Vision Zero, uh, NHTSA, all have really good things, uh, SAMHSA sometimes. Um, we, when we do social media, we also try and capitalize on those um, cultural events that really are, are higher risk for drinking. So we had some Super Bowl things we did, St. Patrick's Day. I know I have a prom one in there, it's not so much adult binge drinking, but we do try and also push the message that adults need to model um, responsible drinking to kids, which will reduce adult binge drinking. Um, we use parents lead um, and promote pa parents lead on our social media and we try and look for those messages like I just said about um, better adult practices to model to kids. Uh, we have parents lead billboards throughout our community um, in places that uh, parents and kids tend to go. So if you look on the far left, it is our uh, American Legion baseball diamond. That's our billboard that we worked with um, Tom and, and Katie and to get um, some media that fit uh, baseball. You know, it's a picture of a kid throwing a ball and being a good example. In the middle is our, we have a local activity center, which is, um, a place to work out like a wellness center, but it also has a gym and hosts all our elementary type athletics like basketball games and volleyball and that kind of thing. And so that's that image with basketball was a better fit. And then on the far right, we have a hockey arena and that's a hockey arena focused billboard that we have up there. And they're really fairly cheap. Those local um, athletic venues to, get, to sponsor a billboard are pretty reasonable to get a fairly good reach. We have a movie theater that plays movies Friday through Monday, and we have a trailer. This is the trailer that runs before the movies. It's a still and it runs, I don't know how many times, you know, as it goes through multiple, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 times before the movie starts. Uh, we were fortunate. Um, we sit on a behavioral mental health task force um, with a lot of community partners, including our school, and our school took the initiative, initiative to have Frank White come and speak. Uh, to their students, 7th through 12th grade students about substance use prevention, um, vaping, alcohol use, um, and opioids. And of no pushing of our own, this is like, I am so thrilled that um, some of these initiatives are moving forward without us being the force behind them. So we found out coincidentally at that meeting that the school was working on this, so we offered to give them assistance to promote it. 
They did invite Edmore and Munich schools to the event. It was for seventh through 12th graders during the school day. I have a couple kids in that age range and they said he did a really nice job. He talked to them. He, my uh, senior said he talked, you could tell he was a college professor um, because he talked to them like they were um, college students. And he, my, my senior really appreciated that. Um, Frank White, incidentally, is a, and I should have started with this, a sociology professor at UND that does do present community presentations on substance use. And it was a really nice fit for our community because he's originally from Wahala, which is in Pembina County, just 30 miles to our east. So he, um, people know him here and respect him here. So we did some promotion for the event that was held in the evening because the school also held a community event for parents. Uh, the evening that he presented. So we did some newspaper ads. If you look in the bottom right corner, we have an electronic sign outside our courthouse we purchased last year. So we did um, promote that on that sign, which uh, DOT said we have 3,400 cars a day go by there. So it's a really nice promotion. You can see how cruddy it is in Langdon in March. I think the snow looks like it's pretty almost halfway up to the roof there. But um, and then we also set up a radio interview between the radio station and Frank White, which was nice to get that reach even for people who couldn't go to the event. Um, the night of the event, we put up a booth for our parents. If you look, we're promoting uh, both parents lead in the talk they hear you. Um, the booth itself had both um, adult prevention materials and parenting and youth prevention materials for parents uh, because the audience was adults. And while we felt like the audience was kind of small, I think it was like 26 or 28 people. Frank told the principal at our school that that was one of the bigger events he's had. He was really, really happy with it. I think he spoke for two hours. Um, the successes we had where it was really nice, the school initiated this Frank White substance use prevention without any pushing on our part, which was great. Um, things are going well with our new newspaper. We're getting lots of earned media. Um, and so we try to support them through paid media as well. Uh, when we can, we have a local radio station that's also very supportive and willing to do that uh, earned media interview, but also like jumped at the chance to interview Frank White when we asked. So we're really fortunate when we put out asks, we get help. Um, I did not put in here, but things that have come up since then, um, at a department head meeting this week, our local sheriff's department has started doing um, saturation patrols where he puts uh, he had one last week where he put every single one of his officers on. And I think they had in the hours they did that, I think like 28 arrests in our little community of Langdon looking for um, drug and alcohol violations. But they were um, picking people up for everything, even receiver hitches, just to do that kind of saturation and look for those substance use problems in our community. Um, so that is really positive. It's nice to see that's happening without push from us. Um, a thing I didn't put in here, but I want to mention at a SACHO meeting I was recently at, uh, Ryan Gellner from Vis Vision Zero presented, and he talked about some of the substance use initiatives that tie well into their uh, traffic safety initiatives. And so one of the things he mentioned is they have a Sydney vehicle, which is uh, a simulated impaired driving car. And so we've been working with our Chamber of Commerce trying to see if we could get that at our, we have a music fest and kind of street fair uh, in the summer and um, we're struggling a little bit to find a space big enough, but they're very interested in having having Vision Zero in that Sydney car at that event, which would be great because in the evening, um, their music event has been one of our alcohol events I mentioned earlier that had few restrictions and is gradually improving. So to have uh, something about uh, drunk driving would be, I think, helpful. Uh, we also, uh, he also mentioned he had um, contracted with, the oh the Bismarck minor league baseball team and the name's escaping me right now um, to do some messaging when they're announcing games about um, for traffic safety prevention and the examples he gave in gave were for example if you're at a baseball game and somebody gets a home run you could be like my son Tucker Welsh got got home safe you can get home safe too by buckling and in my head, um, drunk driving prevention um, on the radio is a nice fit with that too. You know, so-and-so got home safe, you get home safe too, don't drink and drive. And so I visited with our local radio announcer. Our um, high school and Legion games are all on the, uh, broad, most all, all of them are broadcast on our local radio station. So I visited with our sports announcer and he was very open to doing the idea. It took a little bit of work because 
uh, that did have to be okayed through their manager because it, it technically probably is a PSA in free advertising. Um, and the, the messages, we have been unable to play hardly any baseball because it snows here all the time, um, as recent as two weeks ago, but, and it's wet, wet, wet. But I'm really hopeful that might be a really nice uh, earn media message that just kind of naturally fits into something people are listening to and doesn't feel like you're so much forcing it down their throat. Um, and then the third success I thought was really nice is our community health assessment went out last week um, or two weeks ago maybe and substance use prevention has always been a concern in our community on that and it continues. They, they placed the, our local hospital who's hosting that assessment placed it very prominently on their assessment so I hope we get good data from that. Our challenges are a deeply embedded social norm of binge drinking, which is that's a really slow and hard needle to move despite all the work we're, we're doing. I think you find you baby steps until you get to those bigger things. Um, another challenge is finding um, media for that electronic sign. The sign is paid for, so all media placements free, but it's a little challenging to find things that fit and um, display well on it. Um, so that's been a little bit of work and an ongoing challenge in an area we could focus more on. Um, another challenge that's coming up is our local Chamber of Commerce director is retiring, so we'll have to build a new relationship and, and that was a process as well. So hopefully that goes well in the future. Well, that's awesome. Geez, you got a lot that's going on. That's all I have. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a lot. That's great. It's been a good uh, quarter. It has. It's nothing yes. bad. Uh, it sure, it sure looks like it. You did remind me of a couple things. So we are putting out a training and technical assistance RFP. We've talked about this before. Um, we've drafted and redrafted the proposal, and hopefully it goes out sometime in five to ten years. But uh, what this proposal would do is, is your capacity for doing the prevention work is is high level. So you guys all have high level capacity for doing prevention work. You've been through the, the SAPS trainings. Um, we do these quarterly trainings, all these other things that you guys do throughout your work at, at your local public health units. Um, but what this training and technical assist plan is going to con contain is something to help you build the capacity of your communities. So that's part of this plan and it might be regional events. It might be like maybe some local events and we'll be providing the support and the vendor to help you plan some of these events and things like that. It'll also include like maybe a capacity assessment of your communities. So just know that we're trying to work this out and hopefully it'd be a huge benefit to what you're doing locally. So keep those presenters in mind because part of it would be to maybe host a prevention, like maybe regional prevention conferences. Uh, it could be a local prevention conference. Um, just some things we're kind of working out. So keep, keep in mind some of those presenters that you're running into that do a really good job. Uh, we might be asking you for those those contacts when we when we get into it, um, that was. Can I that was quick of... quick then, Tom? Because yeah. I don't know how many people in this group go to Vision Zero, or registered for Vision Zero, but I do think that's a wonderful partner when you're talking about that in presentations. And they had to cancel their conference because of a blizzard, and it's rescheduled for the 25th and 26th of May, and it's virtual. Perfect. Yes. Good and I update. think their their initiatives mesh well with ours. I think. Absolutely, especially when we get into the enforcement and things like that. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I was going to tell you is you're doing a lot of promotion with your speak volumes and things like that. Um, we too are working on a contract with Cat Communications to do the same thing. So you'll see a lot more promotion coming up with uh, speak volumes. Um, also, parents lead. We are we are creating some tribal specific parents lead um, resources and ad, ads and stuff like that. So that'll be coming out. Um, and then we're also doing some more stuff with Parents Lead, with Flint Communications. So we got a lot of state communication going on. So if you have any questions about that, you can let us know. Um, I'm hoping to get the calendar of promotion soon, and we'll forward that out to you guys once we get it. But um, I'll just have Katie, if you want to just monitor the chat, um, that'd be great. And if anything comes up, just let me know. But yep. we'll let Central we'll let Central Valley go next. Can you see my screen? Yep, if you yeah, just want to make it full size or whatever. Like there you that? Go. Yep. Okay, perfect. I'm at the end of my PowerPoint. Um, Steph, you're very hard to follow up, by the way. You had a lot of really good information. <laughs> I will say I took a few classes from Frank White. Um, can you see my thing talking? 
I can actually. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, yeah, that's interesting. In case anybody's hard hard of hearing, I can speak clearer so I can pick up my words. Um, I took a few classes from Frank White in college, and he is wonderful. Um, I learned a lot from him. He's very um, down to earth and is very honest about substance use and substance use issues. So I've always enjoyed him a lot. So I'm Shannon. I'm from Central Valley. We are um, over here in Jamestown, we serve both Stutzman and Logan counties. Um, our population is about 15,000 here in Jamestown. And so with this grant and this project, we've primarily focused just right here in Jamestown um, with our efforts. Our problem um, and our local condition is underage drinking. And then we were finding in the past from the police department that there was a lot of drinking going on in city parking lots. And then just recently, per um, some data that we'd received from the local park district and from the police department that it had kind of shifted to the parks. Um, and there was they were finding vandalism, substance use, sex, all those things happening in the city parks after hours. And so it had become quite a concern for the community. And so we are working to address those social access issues. Um, our strategy is physical design change. And so last year we implemented security cameras in this in the city parking lots. And this year we are working with the park district to try and address some of those issue, issues in the parks. And so we're working with law enforcement and with the park district districts specifically to um, work in those areas. Because we have quite a few parks here in Jamestown and we really um, want to make sure that they remain safe um, so they're a safe place for families to go um, and now as the weather is getting warmer we're going to be seeing more more and more people entering our city parks um, so our most recent activity that we've added obviously is the security camera so right now we're really in the planning phase we've gotten bids out um, and then the electric and everybody has all been out to make sure that what we want to do is going to work um, and so they've been just out. I'm kind of just waiting to hear back from them. I've put the ball in my partner's hands on this part of the project. And so um, I'm just waiting to hear when they're going to get put in. Um, we have the four cameras that we had put in our parking lot last summer completed. And I recently received data from the police department that our calls for service for those areas decreased by um, approximately 50%, which was pretty significant. And they alluded it to one, the signage and two, the cameras being placed in that area. And um, we've had some pretty good feedback from the community just kind of thanking us for these efforts um, because it was pretty destructive um, what was happening um, right downtown in Jamestown with um, high, sc high school kids and college age kids um, hanging out and doing illegal activity. So it's been very very well um, accepted from one community members and two um, the local businesses here in this area. And then my last slide here, this is just a map of what we're planning for in one of our parks. It's McElroy Park. It's our biggest park um, to, act, to physically loop around. I know the loop that goes around this park, if you want to walk it, it's about a mile. It's 0.9 um, miles. And so it's a very large park. Um, and there's people here constantly, and so we are finding a lot of substance use issues um, in this park. And so we're putting in some security cameras. So this was my most recent um, design that I received from the company. Um, and so we're hoping to get these done here um, this summer and implemented and hopefully to help keep our parks safe. And that's all I have, Tom. That's awesome. You 50% 50, 50 reduction in the calls for service, huh? Yes, yes. That's great. Um, yeah, and these are this is a supported strategy, you guys, in your CADCA 7 strategies that we kind of follow. It's changing that physical environment so that if you're seeing these issues occurring in your community, you can do something similar. So just uh, reach out to us or Shannon if you have questions, um, and you can do something of, of the same if you want. So that's awesome. Good work. Thank you. Okay, so City County. I saw Katie was on, right? Hi, I have a little hodgepodge of the way that I'm joining today. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Awesome. Okay. Well, now we can't hear you, Katie. <laughs> Still there? Yes. 
trying to get my PowerPoint here. Well, while you're while you're doing that, I can give an update on not in my house really quick. We are under contract with sure. Katie and Shannon to update some of those materials. I don't know if she had that in her PowerPoint, but they are updating some of our not in my house materials. So just know that we'll give you more information on that when it's available. We're kind of in the review process. We're having a meeting and stuff like that. So all right, there we go, Katie. We can see it. There we go. OK, hi, I'm Katie. I work in Barnes County at City County Health District located in Valley City. And um, for the SAPC project, we decided to focus on underage drinking. That's kind of our most persistent issue here um, and specifically working on um, social hosting and other kind of environmental things we might be able to or policy based things we might be able to change. Um, sort of like Shannon, we've had changes in our environmental strategies, um, still focusing on social hosts through the development uh, and uh, sharing of not in my house materials, as well as advocating for a social host ordinance. I don't know that the environment is great for that at the moment, so it'll be good to continue to focus in that area. Um, but one of some of the most recent changes in activities are uh, our work with county parks. And so Barnes County has um, county run camping grounds and larger park areas. And one of the issues that we found out is going on around there um, has to do with underage drinking and adult binge drinking specifically. And so what we've been able to do is partner with them to add some cameras to the campgrounds uh, as well as wi-fi access and some uh, signage and a lighting project out there um, the issue with wi-fi we we're kind of able to help them out um, with two things one getting the camera so they can monitor what's going on and two uh, the carrot with that was kind of the wi-fi access that they needed to be able to have the cameras out there because it's kind of it's pretty rural um, and so there's this feeling that there's not a lot of law enforcement or other things like that going on out there. Uh, one of the most significant pieces, I think, of that partnership, uh, the guy who trains the weekend hosts out at the parks also happens to be the person that does maintenance on our building. And so I was visiting with him about um, openings for weekend hosts. And I'm like, well, what do they do? What do they have to know how to do? Or how is it that they show up as weekend hosts? And he was kind of telling me about the responsibilities within there. And that got us talking about adding underage drinking into their uh, information, kind of the signs and how you might respond if there was an issue into their little training packets. And then the thing that I love about the way that communities in North Dakota are funded right now, kind of across the spectrum of substance use prevention, is that I was then able to say, how about Narcan? Do you train them on the use um, of Narcan or would you like, would you be open to that? Can I help you with some overdose prevention things so that would include Narcan and any of those response kits? Um, and just kind of having you guys come up with a plan for what that might look like. And then that led us kind of into the harm reduction conversation. And we were like, well, we've kind of had reports that you maybe have issues with um, needles in these areas and what that might look like. And so we were able to talk about sharps containers for proper disposal. Um, and so that that part of it is just is really working for us. And so um, the training of those hosts so they can recognize uh, underage drinking and respond if they need to uh, and so that they can recognize uh, and respond to overdoses. Those are kind of pretty significant developments for us. Um, so that was kind of a change in the local condition as well. And then uh, the Career and Tech Center here in Valley City apparently kind of has a problematic uh, parking lot situation where it's kind of not visible and so we've been getting some reports too of activities going on around there. So I think that'll be kind of our next um, partnership and if we can collect data related to those calls for service thank you for that shannon i think that'll help us kind of prove um, that we were able to do something so um yeah in addition to shannon and i being really excited to expand on those not in my house resources this is what we've been doing in this area that's awesome yeah and katka had a call for presenters and I think this would be something that you guys could potentially present on is the uh, the change in physical environment. 
um, especially especially if you got data surrounding some of the outcomes of, of what occurred. I think this would be something that you could share with them and potentially get on the docket for a present, present, presentation out in DC just to show how this works. Um, because I think other communities would love to hear how this is working and how you did it and things like that. So just keep that in mind. I might pitch you guys out to CADCA to do some some training. <laughs> but great work on that, you guys. All right, so next we have Foster. I saw Jen was on. Jen, are you still connected? Any issues there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Uh, share. Um. Can never figure this out, Tom. I'm so bad at Teams. That's okay. I like Zoom, but to be honest, so Teams I is not do. my thing. They took away our state's ability to do Zoom, which is I unfortunate. Okay. I hit the share thing. And now yep. what do I do? Now just select which screen you want to share. Um, usually it's the one, like there'll be just a couple options for screens. Pick the one that looks like your PowerPoint, and then you should be able to just share it. There we go. Got it. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so underage drinking and we're trying to do community norms. Um, so failure of adults to understand the long term effects. Um, so this quarter, uh, what I'm really working on is um, Project Northland. So um, we um, are really finishing up. So um, two great or two Groups are done. Two will finish next week. Um, so these are the projects. This is what's really fun about Project Northland is when they get into the project phase. So um, for Slick, so uh, for Slick Tracy, um, the group that finished uh, this mid coder group did um, teenage brain drain, how alcohol, alcohol affects the brain, um, ways for young people to have fun, and um, what adults think about people who drink and drive. So um, it's always fun to get pictures of the groups. Um, this is the poster by one of the groups. Um, so that's kind of fun. So first like Tracy, they just do poster projects. Um, let's see here. Um, this group is the one that did healthy ways for people to have fun. And I really have them concentrate on realistic things they can do in their own area. Um, and this is mid so it's very rural, rural out there. Um, this is the adult poll on drinking and driving. So they had to each interview, they're missing one in their group here, there's four of them, they each had to interview four people. Um, so they did teachers, parents, grandparents, that kind of thing. Um, so those are their poster projects. Power lines is really fun. So in Project Northland, there's three curriculums. Um, we only get the mid coda students for two years because their um, sixth graders are in a different county. So we just get the seventh and eighth graders. And then the um, in Carrington, we get sixth, seventh, and eighth, but in eighth grade, we teach um, safe dates, and that's part of a violence prevention initiative that we have with the hospital. Um, so we don't get to get them to teach them two different things. And just last year, I taught amazing alternatives, and it's really not my favorite one. That one doesn't do projects, and it really overlapped a lot with what the health teacher did. Um, and that one's a little more outdated as far as some of the language they use and that kind of thing. And so, and the project part um, is more hands-on and the kids really enjoy that. Um, and they get to pick their own project kind of out of a menu of things. And so um, it's a little more fun for them and more hands-on, the um, Slick Tracy curriculum and the power lines. So that's why I chose to go with those. Um, and then I don't know if you guys know much about safe dates, but, um, that's a really good curriculum too, and that's also from the same company that does Project Northland. And so that's kind of how we came up with it. And then Mid-Coda is actually going to have us teach Project Northland next year to their ninth graders. 
uh, or I mean safe dates to their ninth graders. And so, um, yeah, as public health, that's just kind of how we've decided um, to reach all these kids with different things. Um, so this is what the different groups in Dakota and Carrington had picked at, um, to do for their project. So this was really fun too. So I have a couple examples. I don't, we had some, you know, kids can only do so much with their computers and, you know, they can insert the stick drives and then with the Apple computers and email, they can only send me files that are so big. So I'm working with their uh, media person to get some of their PowerPoints and their videos that they did. Um, so like for the public service announcements, they made this really cool video. So um, their IT guy is going to have to get that to me. Um, and then um, different things like that. So I don't have everything yet, but I do have some cool examples. So this was the billboard one. So they came up with their own message. This is them presenting to their class. Um, this was a statistic they all really liked. It's in their before and after the pre and post test um, in the curriculum. And they all kind of think this is interesting. Um, so this is what they picked for their billboard. Um, this was original artwork by this group. They picked the Looney Tunes. Um, so this was the story they told with their comic and they did the artwork themselves, came up with the story. So that was kind of neat. Um, this group interviewed a judge. It's a district judge um, that actually lives in Jamestown. Um, he doesn't necessarily hear all the cases in our area. He just does um, if there's a conflict, but I know him personally and he agreed to do it, so it worked out good. So they did a Zoom call with him um, and got their information. Um, our local newspaper is really good. So she is going to like the different comics and um, a lot of the groups I had write up a little newspaper article. So I need to edit those now that most of their projects are done and get them to her and she will run them in the newspaper. Um, so that's awesome. And then these gals did the Slick Tracy rides again. So they acted out a Slick Tracy comic for the sixth graders. And then Tom, do we have time to run just a little minute video? Sure. Um, so you guys can see a little bit. I don't, I'm hoping it'll work. We can see it, we just can't hear it. Oh, OK. Well, anyway, they acted it out. They came up, they did a rap, and there's two places where they have to rap. So the one um, who's dressed up um, kind of is the villain. She did one rap and the other two, and they came up with their own music and costumes, and that was really fun. And it was fun um, to go act it out for the sixth graders who just got done doing all the Slick Tracy comics. Um, so that was fun that they picked that. I haven't had anyone pick that yet. Um, so um, that's the slideshow. Um, other things we're doing, um, I actually do have Sydney coming um, to our fair in June. So the Vision Zero um, go-kart things, um, they are coming to us. And so they do like drunk driving, they do distractive driving with um, like texting and driving. And then they also do like tired driving. So if you're overly tired, so there's different simulations they can do. So they're coming to our fair in June. Um, let's see here. With the survey, the parents lead survey, we had different um, Facebook um, groups shared in our community, our Healthy Communities Coalition, our City Library, our Chamber. We shared it on the public health website. Um, so we've done a couple different things to try to get people to take that. Um, but yeah, most of this quarter was doing um, Project Northland. So that's awesome, uh, Jen. And we might have you once we start doing some quarterly meetings again or or trainings. We might have you present a little bit on what these different curriculums are and kind of their goals 
and mm -hmm. kind of how you implement them because it looks like you're pretty well versed in Project Northland. And I, I was trained in a long time ago in just in a couple of the different curriculums and really loved it. The kids love it too. So it's, yeah. it's something that the others might want to look into and just learn more about. So we might just have you do a, just a short presentation, you know, in one of those meetings to just kind of go over the different, uh, the different curriculums with that. Yeah. And awesome. you know, with safe dates too, they talk, um, there's a big component about substance use and making good decisions. Um, you know, alcohol and drug free and how that impacts um, the decisions you make when you're dating. Um, so that ties in to substance use too. Absolutely. Good. So. All right, well, thank you. Okay, Lake Region, you wanna go next? All right, let me share my screen. All right. Can you see my screen? Not yet, no. Nope. Try it again. Kate, if you have Holly's presentation, do you want to get it ready just in case you have to share the screen? We know that teams can be kind of fussy when it comes to sharing your screen, so. And Holly, if you can't get it, let us know and Katie can pull it up for you. Okay, Katie, can you pull it up? Awesome, we can see it now, Holly. Can you see it? Um, I'm, I'm it's stuck in the <laughs> presentation. <laughs> can't seem to get out. Oh, hit escape button. We go. Yep. All right, I'm. There we go. OK, I'm Holly with Lake Region Public Health Unit in Devil's Lake. We service uh, Ramsey County. Um, Benson County, Pierce County, and Eddy County. Um, our, I am the Substance Abuse and Tobacco Prevention Coordinator. Um, we have been putting the, our, our, we are using the Not In My House program. And we've been putting out this information all over town, um, just waiting for the updated information so we can get it be more current. Um, our big concept is to prevent underage drinking. And the way we're doing it is by educating parents on social host laws, prevent minors from buying alcohol, and teach beverage servers merchants how to fake, fake IDs. And so we have in Ramsey County, we are last, um, we had reports of. Uh, families going into one of our restaurants, which is also a bar, and allowing their underage child to drink. And um, so we like, okay, we need to really crack down. And so our law enforcement went to every bar, every restaurant, everybody that we, that has serves, has an out, a liquor license in Ramsey County. And our last beverage server training, we had 47 people attend. Normally we are less than 20. Um, Pierce County would like to start this program and Benson County has been sending their servers to Ramsey to make sure that they are up to snuff. And so that's been a 
that's we have good real working relationship with all the law enforcement in all three in three of those counties. Um, we've been averaging Spirit Lake Casino is not actually part of our area, but it is a part of our area because so many of our residents work there. Um, but they've been having responsible forever server trainings every month, and so we have been able to compile a list from their training and our training. So that way any restaurant, anyone who wants to check to see if their employee has a valid certification, we are working all together. So that way we are servicing our entire population. Um, We're actively having pledge card sign. We will be distributing these signs that were sent to us, which were, are beautiful. Um, in the next couple of weeks, as soon as the ground is thawed enough for me to pound them in the ground. Um, we were able to, we these beautiful bags we got from um, prevention. And so I was able to pass out over 700 of them to post prom and the library had a big book sale. So our, so we were able to pass out chip clips, magnets, social host information. The barriers we came across is that servers were trying, were paying to take their responsible beverage server training in Grand Forks and Bismarck, but it didn't have our local information and our, on our information, our bylaws, it is required that they take ours, not other places. So in a result, we do not accept it from other counties as part of our local ordinances. And we had a problem with underage drinking with parents in a local bar. So this is why we're really pushing. And we are looking into doing an online course so that way we can work, be respectful of our um, server's time. And that's it. That's what we've been working on. Great. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, a lot of communities don't allow others to provide the server training and that's just because they co usually cover local ordinances within those server trainings so that's why a lot of cities say that it has to be our server training so just so others are aware that's usually why it's in there because it does cover local law um, but yeah great great job holly okay next on the list is lamore do we have anyone from lamore on Go through here real quick to see See anybody? Okay, we'll come back. Roulette, Jody, if you want to go next. Can you see that? Okay. We can. Yep. Hi. So I'm Rollett County. Um, my name is Jody Hijack, and I work as the prevention coordinator. And so we uh, work with our coalition as the Rollett County Wellness Coalition, and we serve communities of Rolla, Dunseith, Rollett, and St. John, and then we surround the Turtle Mountain Reservation. Rollett County is the 10th largest county by population, with about 30% currently living in or below the poverty level. Um, so our local condition that we identified was underage alcohol use and our goals were to decrease the number of those using and then also to decrease the number of those providing the alcohol by educating, promoting our campaigns and advocating for trainings, etc. Um, the biggest thing that I'm seeing right now with what we've set for goals and what the outcomes uh, is unfortunately with the YRBS and the census um, and a few of the other things that uh, happened through the pandemic, our participation rates were very, very low, um, which is going to hurt us in the long run, especially by population to show and express our needs. Uh, beings, we do have the problems existing, but now we're not going to have the numbers to show that besides. So uh, with the YRBS, things like that, just having to compare numbers. I don't I don't know. I'm a little bit in panic mode when it comes to data and local things that we can move forward with. 
Um, as far as some of our implementation, I'm going to keep this kind of short and sweet. We've continued to enhance our community's capacity by using our campaigns and participating in basically any community or school event. Um, also taking advantage of holidays or national weeks to advocate. Uh, as you can see in the kind of bottom corner there, we used an Easter bunny uh, during public health week and we traveled around the community and then I made posts every day of the week, kind of making people guess where we were at, knowing that public health is where you're at. And so we were going to their communities, taking pictures and using the option, the the um, like quotes in our social media post to provide them with a nugget of knowledge, whether it was anything to do with prevention or just public health in general. Um, we've set up display booths and put signs in our windows at our office, um, utilize social media, newspaper, radio. We also got the digital um, marquee sign. That's been a real good thing for us, especially like you see on that picture where it has the Narcan and things like that. So now we're getting people to come in and actually ask about our prevention programs and things um, because of seeing that sign. Um, we've made a few more partnerships with tribal entities and just having the option of being able to um, partner with things uh, such as like their food distributions. I just take every option as I can to try to reach that many more people with our uh, messages and hand out anything that I can. Um, kind of continuing on with that, we also use like our health tracks programs. Um, we have a lot of we serve roughly around 50 to 80 families per per month. And so I found that to be a really good way of sharing our prevention tools, but then also uh, advocating for the parents lead and things like that. Um, this year we did activities for prom and I just reached out to just various things such as like the AAA promise and they sent me like some free um, things to provide to our schools and then I just added some of the parents lead and the cards and different things in with the packets as well and provided those to our schools. And then um, again, just we educate through social media, school websites, we use our theater as well. Um, and then we have a school nurse, so I've kind of provided her with some end of the school year things that we are just sharing in the schools. And then as far as implementation of our responsible beverage server training, I never did make any ground with our commissioners as far as uh, getting this to be mandated uh, for our area. However, I've had pretty good uptake from our retailers. I just did my last training. I think it was like the middle of March. Um, so we just continue to advocate with local retailers, uh, pass out uh, brochures, expressing to them the importance, but also the benefits that they seek from this as well. Um, I have a couple of trainings set up for upcoming months, and so we have some new bar owners and things like that. That is all I got. Awesome, nice work. Yeah, I like all your promotion and some of those customized signs. Those are pretty cool. I'm trying to escape this. How do I escape this? I uh, just go stop sharing or whatever. You should be good. So thanks, Jody. Appreciate that. All right. So we'll go to Karen Southwestern. Are you able to hear us and share your screen? I am able to hear you, but I'm not even going to mess with trying to share my screen. So, Katie, if you could pull it up. It's hard to tell how long it would it? take. <laughs> yep, you stopped, Jody. I saw. Yep. And while we're waiting for Katie to pull it up, I'll just let you know, too, that Danielle and Jennifer are on also. Um, Danielle works a lot with um, parent lead information out to daycares and makes a lot of contacts there. And then Jennifer has been key in taking on our um, compliance checks and that kind of thing. So because, you know, I am retired, so we have those things going on. So um, here at Southwestern District Health Unit, our focus area for this grant is Dickinson, but we do serve the eight counties. And so some of our ads and some of the distribution of parent lead, you know, that still goes out to all the counties in the area whenever they have things that they want us to be involved in. 
Um, you can go to the next slide. Yep. So our priority is underage drinking, and we just have high social access. Youth are getting alcohol from parents in homes that are not monitoring alcohol based on community norms. And um, so um, we've done a number of things. Um, we conducted our second alcohol compliance check in February and March, and we had 29 pass, but we had five that failed. And one didn't serve, but told the uh, teen that they could sit at the bar and have a Coke. And so that was our chance to educate them about the guidelines regarding the century code and really what that all means. So we put that in that letter to them. And then Jennifer and I um, followed up with a newspaper article, you know, and we just are really trying to focus on the positive in the community and saying we really want everyone to pass. You know, we don't want any fails. We don't want them to have a fine. We don't want, you know, all that kind of thing. So that's our goal. And um, so we talked about the re responsible beverage server training and how it's now available free online through the North Dakota Safety Council. And then I'm following up that with letters, um, which will be going out most likely this week. I'm about ID scanners for community events. And then again, to let them know how they can um, contact that. We've done a lot of work with um, the Youth Commission, you know, that got going. Um, we're kind of looking at probably changing some commission members because they're seniors and we have some that are sophomores in that. And so they're just been getting some publicity out about the Youth Commission and they're sitting with our um, commissioners. They're doing a good job. You know, the majority of them had um, concerns about the behavioral health and that. And uh, so, yeah, you can go to the next slide. That's fine. And so you can just see kind of the things that we have been doing. Um, we continue to hold our coalition meetings. Um, we haven't done any in person yet, um, just given, you know, um, us being public health and that. Um, we continue to have various ads. We change them up probably um, every three months. I think they're on a cycle for different receipts. And we distribute materials through our vaccination clinics. And then we were uh, involved in the Behavioral Health Summit in Energy Country, which took place actually in Watford City. But um, we sponsored a booth up in that area and Jennifer and I went up for that and we had three of the Youth Commission um, members talk on a panel about behavioral health in high school and along with some of the Watford City High School kids that talked about, you know, the problems that they see, what they're trying to do to address it in the school systems and in the communities as well. And then we provided various materials from parent lead things on suicide and building resilience and you know anything that they're interested in. And um, um, I did have one of the staff members attend that webinar using that adolescent development to inform pre prevention practice on brain and behavior, because you know I think that is where we're going to catch or get parents interested in that. And so we're working on some streaming ads on the weather app through KQCD so that we can kind of um, link that to information on brain and alcohol development and that. So hopefully we can get parents to understand why you should not provide alcohol to kids and that kind of thing. So. Um, that was the booth that we had up there. We kind of hit everything from parent lead to, you know, vaping and um, Narcan and opioid use. And we had the doTERRA bags and we had you know, emotional health toolkits. We just had a little bit of everything, you know, available up there. And um, so um, just kind of um, plugging along and trying to change um, community. I think one positive thing of the youth participating in that behavioral health summit was that um, the mayor from Dickinson attended that as well. And so I think that was a good thing because we've kind of run into a little resistance with our mayor 
You know, he thinks it's more like a school problem than a community problem and that kind of thing. And so then we lost the um, person, um, one of the administrative uh, people, our city administrator, who was the big push behind the youth commission. And so I was afraid that we were gonna lose our footing with that, but I think the mayor attending that and getting some accolades for those kids and what they're doing and what they presented, I think that'll keep it keep it going in the community. So Jennifer, Danielle, you have anything you wanna add? Maybe just to add um, to that, Karen, too, with, along with the mayor, we had uh, Rich Wardner uh, was up and also spoke at that conference. And so, um, and he's always been a champion um, mm -hmm. for public health in our area. So I think that was good for um, all of, all that it, you know, our area that to see that and, and like you said, to hopefully be on the same page. That's all. Yeah, and he's going to be retiring, so we're hoping whoever fills his <laughs> shoes has the same dedication. <laughs> and, you know, I guess um, another person talked about, you know, the um, uh, community survey, and I know the hospital here in conjunction with public health has done it. We just haven't seen the results of that yet, so we'll take a look, but we think pretty much it's usually going to be the behavioral health uh, alcohol drug and then we'll work with, you know, the hospital to um, figuring out um, what our strategies are going to be. That's awesome. Good. Yeah, and those those community events like that behavioral health conference that occurred um, are some of the same things that we want to do with that state technical assistance plan is, is bringing those events to your regions, maybe your communities to help build that capacity specifically for your key leaders and things like that. So I saw Miranda had her hand up if she uh, uh, yeah, I just want to say um, it was really for me kind of cool to listen to the Southwest District's kids talk about prevention. They were so much more well versed in what prevention is, and it was really eye opening for me that my kids are so lost and they have no idea. But those kids that spoke on from you guys i think it just speaks to the work that you guys are doing with them but they they were so educated and so articulate on on this stuff it was a joy to hear them and i think it was great for me to have my superintendent listen to them and my youth leaders in the schools listening to them so that they can understand because i've i've tried to hammer this into our kids and they just it's just not sticking but hearing those kids, I think it was like, oh, geez, you know, they're using the language Miranda uses. Maybe we should listen to her a little more, but pat yourselves on the back. Your kids sounded great, and I think that speaks well, to thank, your guys' work. Thank you for that, and and they did. We had two of those um, guys that presented are actually headed into the guard, so they are very much, very much leaders. In the, in the and one, one future politician. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, awesome. It sounds like we missed guard, a good event. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sounds like we missed a good event, Katie. All right. So Towner, do we have someone from Towner? Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. How are you doing? Me. Hi. All right. Let me share my screen here. Are you able to see? Oops. Are you able to see my screen? You got it. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, um, I'm Annie Maestrian and I am in charge of the AOD grant through Towner County Public Health. Um, there are three employees here, Majesta, me, and Mackenzie. Um, our identified priority substance is alcohol and underage drinking. Um, here's just the percentages that have, they have not changed since I have not done another survey yet, but that will be coming up. Um, a majority of them get their alcohol from their parents or from someone that's 21 and over. Um, our environmental strategy is the social host liability law. Um, we had a little turnover with our 
previous um, sheriff resigning and retiring, and now we have an acting sheriff. Um, I talked to him in person to try and get this, the social host rolling, and I emailed him as well, so just waiting on that. And I did get your email, Tom, with the toolkit, and I have looked at that previously. So um, hopefully you can get something going here. But um, our barriers are the key stakeholders returning calls or emails from us, and then the lack of, oh, dude, why did I go way back there? Huh. Okay, sorry. Okay, so currently we're work. we had a collaboration with um, my fellow coworker Mackenzie to bring awareness um, and provide education on the understanding of the relationship between underage substance abuse and suicide prevention. We used Cognito, and this was the stimulator, stimulations users entered a virtual environment and engaged in role play conversations with emotional responses, um, virtual humans. Through a practice and receiving personalized feedback, users and le users learn and access their competency to lead similar conversations in real life. So this was primarily based on substance, but it intertwined with or primarily based with suicide, but had substance use intertwined with them. Um, we had really good feedback with this. The teachers said that they were able to really kind of pick out actually what's with this virtual humans. Um, some of the students particularly that came to mind and they are were wondering if we could use Cognito as well to if they had like a student based one where the students could take it to have conversations and know what to say to other students that are having suicide or substance abuse problems to help them out. So um, activities that we have implemented so far through this grant are Facebook posts, new newspaper ads, we put up posters and flyers. We hand out brochures. Um, we do handouts at vaccine clinics. We did a booth at school registration last year. We have added banners to the school gym this year. Um, we did a sticker shot campaign and I handed out flyers to school teachers and flyers to parents at um, parent teacher conferences. Um, building capacity, we, I do webinars each month and then prevention training we did last June. Oh, what? Three. Um, like <laughs> I know. <laughs> so um, we did an implement or er, implementation plan for an um, alternate event. Um, the we implemented a plan for the after prom party. We collaborated with the junior um, parents that host this every year. So they um, sent me um, a plan to keep the kids safe and alcohol free uh, before the prom and then during the prom and after prom party. Um, I had, I ordered those drawstring bags and put chip clips and um, I did put a flyer in there as well as the pens and those, the, every kid that went to the prom party got received that. I ended up having, they ended up having 65 kids register for this and sign up. And they said that only two kids did not show up and then one kid left early. And then I contacted the sheriff's office to see if there was any minors given out or if they had um, reported any partners, you know, youth parties, and they said there was nothing of that sort. So it ended up being a good turnout for that. Uh, we also did hosted a booth at our Towner County breakfast. The county workers um, provide a free breakfast for the county um, for anyone that wants to come. So we had all sorts of things set up, whether it was um, parents lead things, uh, 
Narcan, um, free testing. We kind of had a little thing for every little option. So we did that. Um, and now back to my barriers. <laughs> so uh, barriers would be key stakeholders, returning calls and emails, and then just our regular lack of staffing and hours. So otherwise, we've been slowly and kind of adding things, you know, getting comfortable with our grant work. And I feel like it's coming along pretty good. So that's about it. Great. Thank you. Uh, that That's a good update. And and speaking of the grants, we're, we're most likely going to start working on the next grant cycle here pretty quick. So just know there'll be some communication around that. Uh, but we do have about 15 minutes for the next six people. So if you could just uh, do quick and brief, that'd be great. <laughs> so up in Missouri. Quick and brief, that's my middle name. Yeah, Not. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll try. I've been on maternity leave. Well, I just got off. So um, my presentation is a little different today. Can you see it? Do I need to do like, the whole screen thing? There, is that better? There. Yeah, you can see it. All right. Um, my name is Miranda Samuelson Figaro. I do the underage drinking prevention and um, suicide prevention in McKinsey and Williams counties. Um, this grant is specifically in McKinsey County, however, so we'll just talk about that. Our priority substance, this isn't what I want it to be, is it? Is um, underage drinking, our high social access, and um, what we're work is working on and have been working on since I've kind of got off maternity leave is the uh, planning ahead for the summer and looking at our increased alcohol consumption. Um, Oh boy, I really have it messed up there. But during the summer months, um, we kind of set this up in starting in April. Um, April was Alcohol Awareness Month, and we went through the NWPTTC um, or uh, dot org um, Northwest Prevention Training and Technical Assistance Center, and they had this awesome um, campaign educating the community on policy and why policy is important and what's happened um talking about how it links um drinking links to cancer and how there's a rise in women um there were slides on um uh, rates since covid and all that good stuff so our our, our pro our um, facebook page has a lot of this great information um if you were and you can make these slides personalized they just had a great campaign so we did utilize that last month um in mckinsey and williams counties and so what we're setting that up for is this summer is really doing a not in my house summer and pushing really hard to engage all 12 sectors um so at our coalition meeting today we are going to brainstorm on how to utilize not in my house um this the resources from the state and um through our, our, our coalition as far as um, that we'll get into a little bit more. Uh, building skills and we're, we have a new downtowners association. So we're gonna educate them on our Not In My House initiative and that social access piece and what best practices are for events because they're planning a ton. Um, providing support, we're gonna do alternate activities for families this summer. Um, we've got extra patrols during community events, RBST compliance checks, and we're going to hit hard shoulder taps this summer. Uh, we're going to work with our community events um, to develop best practices. And then um, I think we're going to work on the, a Facebook page for the summer campaign alone, just for people to refer back to in the community, just for this specific thing. Um, enhancing and access and reducing barriers. We got those. Uh, scanners that are loaner units for all these community events coming up and we've been working on it talking and getting with all the people on that um uh physical design okay so wristbands are out i guess our pd is no longer in support of them because of all of the issues we had last year of um wristbands being passed at community events so they're not on board with that um my goal is to try to push for education on why they are a best practice and how we can use it as other as use other supporting practices to kind of help them because we have one event where we get 10,000 people on our main street our um, rib fest had Tanya Tucker last year or not Tanya Tucker um, I don't remember her name 
but huge turnout. Um, and then we're going to do the community pledges. Um, my goal is to get a QR code and to distribute this everywhere and try to get people to take the pledge and then have a week probably around the fair where we're getting those um, yard signs in people's hands. Um, changing the consequences, we want to be talking and looking at those um, not just compliance checks, but those those shoulder taps and educating people on providing alcohol to minors, especially at our community events. Um, and then ideally the big policy would be the um, uh, teen social host or teen party ordinance or social host um, that would come out of this. So that'd be great to see. That. I'm, I'm really hoping a few more communities start implementing that social host policy. That'd be wonderful. Yes, great presentation. I don't know how to shut this off. I was going to say really quick, Miranda, Katie left you a message in the chat about new branded stuff is just about ready. So she <laughs> will chat with you about that. Yay, Katie. That makes yeah, we're me kind of, We're kind of the hold up. <laughs> hold up? We're the, we're the hold up. Yeah, we're the hold up. We're trying to get a meeting scheduled and we're going to review it. And yep. How and we'll long are we talking? Party. Oh, I don't know. Two years, maybe four. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> A couple weeks, hopefully a couple weeks is what I'm hoping for, but. Well, we'll use what we got and modify as we go. There you go. <laughs> All right, so Wells County, we'll have you go next. All right. Let's see. Now I can never figure this out. Okay, I <laughs> say window or do I hit screen? You can go to the screen. I always use the screen. Okay. There you go. Okay, Let's so not now. that. All right. Perfect. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. So, fantastic PowerPoints, everybody. Mine is not good, so I'm going to divert from it because as you guys talk, I'm like, oh, we did that too, and I didn't put it in here. So, um, Wells County, um, our environmental strategy is the social host ordinance. And to be honest, um, we really haven't had much success on approaching this, um, but I feel like we've had a couple baby wins. Um, I just feel like our cities aren't receptive of this at this time. And I think like a smaller win to this would be trying to implement like RBST um, requirements for liquor establishments in our community first um we for sure have like the sheriff's department on our side for that they think that's a great idea um they've been getting even though we work with youth they've been getting a lot of um duis leaving the bar and so very clearly like people are being overserved and it's creating a big issue and it's kind of exciting that they're starting to be proactive about it and make some of those arrests so um community cares is our coalition and we meet monthly we also partner with um the central dakota ministerial association and then um meet with stakeholders monthly um with departments he department heads from our county we have a care coordinator from all of us in recovery he's kind of like a peer support specialist um youth coalitions we have pact preventing alcohol consumption among teens that's with um, harvey and fesnan ninth through 12th graders um so what we do is we do like tinkle times that we put in each bathroom that's been going well the kids just hosted a mock crash where we invited law enforcement fire ems um and all the kids 7 through 12 got to observe two cars that had crashed and the theme was distract distracted driving but we tried to tie it into you know this could happen if you're driving impaired under drugs or alcohol and just kind of walked through the scenario and had um like a child be dead on arrival and had the fire department provide like extrication of the vehicle and cut it apart and then we debriefed it all um from like the principal's perspective um, because he's on the fire department too 
and um, the science teachers on EMS and just how that would look like and how it would alter your life forever if a student died and like the sheriff's office having to go deliver that death notification. Um, so it was really impactful. We are going to try and do something with Vision Zero um, and their Sydney vehicle that you guys were talking about too around homecoming time with both our schools. So the kids said that they would really like to do that. So we're gonna try and make that happen. Um, Advance in recovery, we brought um, this counselor and substance use evaluator in weekly through another grant, um, but she's a good partner to, to see what's up with teens and kind of what they're disclosing to her. Project Northland, so um, taught that to seventh and eighth graders this year, wrapped up with the eighth graders here last week. Um, they did their final presentation. Um, we invited school administration, school board, law enforcement to their final project. One of my eighth grade boys, we were talking about what prevents youth from drinking. And I asked, you know, does law enforcement presence, is that a deterrent for you guys? And he said, we don't have like police in our town. And I was like, yes, you do. Like there's three of them. And so that was just interesting because their perception of not seeing law enforcement, not feeling like law enforcement patrol or maybe bust these parties was really interesting. Um, so it was exciting to have them interview for their project, some different law enforcement entities and report back. So it was really successful. We had a great time together the last eight weeks and it was really fun. Um, talked about this Facebook post, sharing um, um, from the state also like NIMSA and SAMHSA, all those good things. Um, for Project Northland, they do a time capsule and in a year we send them, we mail them out to the kids. And I kind of took that opportunity to put in some parents lead materials um, for kids and their parents to kind of go through together. And then we published a big art or a advertisement in the paper of parents lead and then this time we put in the new Parents League bingo one that you guys sent out and some local coffee shops donated like free coupons if parents or caregivers return them to our agency with a completed bingo, we'll give them a free coffee beverage to go redeem. So I thought that was a cool incentive and we're hoping people turn them back because I thought that might get more engagement than just like a social media post that you know, they might not take time to read. Um, okay, so the only other thing that I wanna comment on, we do a lot at like the fair with having just awareness and our booth. So we're looking forward to that. I know I talked with Tom a little bit about breathalyzers, but we did have breathalyzers on site at our Harvey school for post-prom. Um, all students that wanted to gain access to the school after party had to complete a breathalyzer. And that was so well received by school administration, by law enforcement, and by parents. They were really thankful for that. We did not have the same experience with Fezenden School. That really blew up. Um, at first they were going to do it, and then they said from their attorney it violated their Fourth Amendment rights. So we had to get our state's attorney involved and then the school just decided to do away with it at all. So that was really disheartening. Um, I feel like there's a lot of stigma and work to do in our community because it's just interesting that parents would advocate against that because it should be a safe, fun event for all kids that participate. And the whole point is to keep kids from partying after prom. And so, I don't know, it just sends the wrong message to kids, I think, that if you kind of complain and gripe loud enough, you kind of get your way and people back down. And so, yeah, that was disheartening. But other than that, we, um, our youth coalition sponsored and designed the post-prom t-shirts for both schools. So that went well. And oh, the only other thing, I swear I'm gonna go fast. Um, for Project Northland, one of our activities was kids had to come up with various different changes that they would make in their communities and so just like the top four was they wanted counselors on site at schools working with kids and teens that are at risk 
of underage drinking or have gotten like a minor. Um, another important thing for them was to hold alcohol free events in our communities. Um, we don't see a lot of that, um, which is unfortunate. And then um, finding liquor stores and bars who sell alcohol to minors and then host a class about underage drinking, which is exactly what Project Northland did. And so I'm convinced they didn't just choose that because I was in the room, but that they really like spending time with me each week because we have a lot of fun. Um, and then the last thing was they thought it was important to have like a city curfew for teens um, and kids, especially like in the summer and during sports season. And back in my day, I thought that was the thing, but in current day, it is not. So I thought that was just really telling that they thought that was important. Um, OK, ramble, ramble, I'm done. <laughs> You're good. It's Tom was a victim of the Internet, too, so he fell off. He can't get back on. Um, we do have four left, but we have hit the 1130. So I'm going to kind of leave it open to you guys. If you can stay on, we will let the last four present if they're able to. Um, if not, we'll make sure they are the ones to start next time. So uh, Bismarck, Dickey, Nelson, Griggs, Walsh, can you guys stay on and still present? Sure, this is Bismarck. Sue, hi Sue. Hi. <laughs> and yeah, if this anybody has a hard stop at 1130, feel free to drop off. We'll conduct, consolidate um, all these PowerPoint presentations, send them out to you. Um, as well as the recording for this. So, so do you want? Have... Yep, you're good to go, Sue. Okay. <laughs> So is it a full screen for you? Yep. OK, so Bismarck Burley Public Health is located um, in Burley County. We have 95,626 for population. We have three area colleges, U of Mary, BSC, United Tribes Technical College. Our priority was underage drinking in Burley County, the 18 to 21 year olds, 56.5% and 30% binge drink. Our intervening variable um, was that it was high retail access using fake IDs. And we really wanted to learn about how many fake IDs were being used in our community. We had heard about it, but we didn't have concrete evidence. So um, our strategies is to work with our retailers to adopt a policy to use um, to have mandatory fake ID trainings and to use the forensic scanners um, by building capacity through webinars and meetings with their stakeholders. Our short term goals is to increase awareness of the forensic scanners, train a number of people on them, increase the number of retailers using them, along with increasing the numbers of confiscated fake IDs. Our immediate Goal outcome was to decrease social and retail access of alcohol and less likely to use the fake IDs to purchase. And our long term goal is to have decreasing the 30 day alcohol use rate by 2% in four years. So we've kind of were minimal on that. What has happened is, is that we partnered with our police department and I'm very thankful to have Officer Horn is leading this project and she works with our local bars and it started in August with borrowed bucks for three weeks. They had 29 fake IDs that came in. Well, then we snowballed into four other bars, sidelines, sports page, elbow room. And now just recently in April, we moved out to our bar restaurants with Texas Roadhouse. So far to date, we have 107 fake IDs that have been turned in. Um, I'm excited about Texas Roadhouse because our youth. Our youth student committee had talked about one of the local conditions where kids were using them at Texas Roadhouse. And when we go in to talk with our bar owners and also Texas Roadhouse, we bring that fake ID scanner and it's pretty big. And their first thing is they look at us and think, oh my gosh, this is too big to use. We use these handheld scanners. Well, then we show them our fake IDs and their scanners. They try to scan it with it and it doesn't work and they get impressed because the forensic scanners shows what's wrong. 
Um, so Texas Roadhouse, it was a pretty, pretty easy sale with them when they saw that it picked up different things that they weren't getting. Which just started in April, so we want to see what will occur in May with that. Um, we are, we are partnered with the area colleges, all three of them. So Officer Horn each month goes and gets the fake IDs. She scans them in and sends them to the colleges, and then the colleges will identify which students are theirs. And then they'll meet with those students and use their student code of conduct. So it's not like right away they get the police come and cite them for a fake ID. It's about educating them about using this fake ID, the consequences for using them, and utilizing their colleges to say this is a serious offense and this is how it can impact you. Um, our challenges that we've had is, is that we have Bismarck bar owners now saying that the kids are crossing over the river to Mandan to use their fake IDs at the drink. So um, Officer Horn and I met with Mandan PD and Custer Health about doing the same project over there and reaching out to the drink to see if they will do this. Unfortunately, time is our Time is always an issue, and the deputy chief Platten ended up being out of the office for health issues, so we're still waiting to get this hopefully implemented at the drink. We do run where they're kind of like saying, well, th they're going over here. Where can we place this forensic scanner? Um, I'm, I am, they, the bars have reported that when they have seen a decrease of fake IDs, that kids will come in and they'll see the fake ID scanner there and they'll turn around and go back out. So it is a deterrent for it. Our successes is the support of our colleges and the participation of the bars and the bar restaurant. We hope to go into convenience stores eventually and other bar restaurants. We did do a press release in May, had great coverage with KFYR News Story, Prairie Public Radio, and just recently, yesterday, we had the Burley Morton Behavioral Health Coalition meeting and Officer Horn presented. Mayor Steve Bakken was there and he asked for that press release. And this morning, um, US1033.com, it's a radio station where I guess um, I should probably say our mayor has his own talk show there. They're, um, they're people contacted us, interviewed us about the fake ID project, and it will be a written article that's on their website. So that's pretty cool. I'm impressed with the work that we've gotten done with it. We do still have a lot of locations we'd like to move out to. Um, the Burley Morton Behavioral Health Coalition gave us some great ideas of different bar restaurants to be implementing this in. That's great, Sue. Great recognition too. And with that, um, we are in the works of buying more ID scanners here at state as well. So if any anybody else wants to kind of talk to Sue or implement something similar, let us know because we will have some extra ones on hand. So and Sue, we look forward to those reports every month too. It's exciting. Um, do we have anybody from Dickey here? I'm here, Katie. That'd be perfect. Can you see my screen? Yep, we can. OK. OK, so I'm Abby. I'm from Dickey County Health District um, down in Allendale, North Dakota, right on the border between South Dakota and North Dakota. Um, our priority substance is underage drinking. We had a lot of high social access, um, youth getting alcohol from parents in the home or having shop parties, that kind of thing. And then um, what I would like, what I'm gaining to do hopefully is um, is get a social host ordinance. Um, to start off with, with parents lead, um, I have done, I, I put things in the school newsletter, which is both Oaks and Allendale, so that I utilize that every month. And then I also have done a lot of radio ads um, we've put stickers on popcorn bags for um, concession stands, and then I'm doing a 
another one for this summer for baseball and softball. And then I also utilize the school carnival as well. And then for our puberty puberty talks that just happened the last two weeks in both schools, we um, I I put those deck of cards for parents lead in them. So that was about 200 students that were able to receive those deck of cards, which was great. Um, for mo our substance abuse, I have done two different presentations in both Oaks and Allendale in regards to underage drinking and correlating with vaping too. And then I also did my hidden in plain sight room, which was over in Oaks during parent teacher conferences. I had a lot of good feedback. I also had um, some pharmacists like call out to another school and another school wanted me to travel to do it to them, to share the idea with them as well. However, we do not do that. Um, and then, I also co do coordinate the health checks program with our director of nursing, and so I sit in on those and um, I get to talk to the youth about, you know, substance abuse in general, so that's always nice. And then um, our SAD chapters from Allendale primarily is who I'm working with in regards to just doing another sticker shock campaign. And then we have provided post prom t shirts for both Ellendale and Oaks. Oaks's prom is actually this weekend, so they are going to receive their shirts this by Friday. But we just have um, a rethink your drink, is what we put on the back of them. And I've actually seen a lot of kids eat, uh, wearing them, so that's always good to see too. And then just some success successes. Uh, I've also participated in resilience training, which has benefited both. Um, you know, the health checks program is just basically being able to talk appropriately and um, with youth and, you know, people in the community in regards to where how how I would like to promote and get to reach my goals. And then um, we also do toilet talks and um, it's also a benefit. I also try to utilize all of our original programs that we have, um, just like the health checks and trying to incorporate substance abuse in all of those so that I have I reach more people that way. And then our hidden in plain sight bedroom, I definitely think was a, a positive this year in the schools. And then I am next week doing the train your trainer for beverage server training so that we would have that resource in the community um, so people don't have to travel. And then I'm also working on a billboard. I have a meeting tomorrow. And then the post prom is also a good one too. And then barriers, um, I just talked I'm just re the whole goal is just to obviously change the mindset of parents and youth, and that has always been a struggle. So, and then just changing the norm, you know, rural North Dakota, it's not a lot of things to do. So, a lot of it is in regards to drinking and substance abuse. And then just the precedent of other issues around, you know, the vaping and everything like that. So, trying to get to make that a substance abuse is just the priority in general. And that was it. Great. Lots going on. That's yeah. great to be able to attend Train Your Trainer. That'll be good. Yeah, I'm hoping that I can actually hopefully utilize it for the community once we're done and people actually use or utilize the resource. So definitely. Perfect. Just two left. Nelson Griggs. Cassandra, are you still on? Or do you have to jump off? I'm still here. Let's see if I can get my screen shared. Perfect. Can you see my screen? We can see your screen, just not your PowerPoint. <laughs> yep, I'm getting there. There now, can you see it? Yep, perfect. Okay. So I'm Cassandra. I'm the administrator here at Nelson Greggs. Our intervening variable is our community norm. So I'm still not seeing that the community sees that there's a problem, so that's why we're working on community norms. Our local condition, we're working on the social availability for our youth, so this is youth under age drinking too. Um, and then we're just working on restrictions at community events. <clears throat> so some of the things we're doing currently is we're just providing information into the schools. So whether that be through a school newsletter, the magnets, um, any talks that we go into the school, we're really providing information, whether that be parents lead or specifically on drinking. 
um, through adolescent classes or our tobacco talks, we brought in some information just regarding substance abuse. The other thing we're doing each month is we're bringing um, flyers and coasters, coffee sleeves and posters into our 10 um, different local communities around here. We're also um, providing that information into um, newspaper ads, um, just a different venue. And then um, through social media too, we're posting at least eight per month just to get the information out there. Each month we're trying to do webinars um, just to en enhance our skills, especially with a couple of us being new to public health. Um, we're finding those very helpful. Some other things we did this quarter was we provided support for three of our after um, prom parties. Uh, so we used that triple A promise messaging again and just had kids sign the banners and we actually had pretty good response from especially two of the schools. One of the schools wasn't as well as I wanted as many. I wanted more signatures on that banner, but um, still had quite a few really. Uh, the things we hope to do in the future is just to provide either an area for underage drinking or maybe trying the wristbands like you like was said before in other presentations and then bringing that ID scanner to those um, events so that you could pick out those people. Uh, just some barriers that we've had is just we don't have as much time as we'd like to. Uh, it seems like time just keeps slipping away and we're not getting as much done as we'd like to with this grant. And then just the community isn't seeing it as a as a real issue. That's kind of all that's going on in Nelson Gregg's here. Great. And I know you're not alone. A lot of communities don't really see alcohol as an issue at all, but Keep plugging away. <laughs> All right. Our last one, Walsh. Alan, are you still on or did you? You're already going. All right. <laughs> I'm here, here and ready. It's, we it's can hard see to be the last partner and, and follow up all this uh, great material, though. Okay, let's get this rolling. I, I'm just going to leave it in this mode, if that's all right. Is it big enough for everyone to see? Yes, that is perfect. Okay. So myself and Joelle Schmuck work on this uh, grant together. Joelle couldn't be with us today, um, and actually she does the bulk of the program, but uh, I'm presenting the slides on her behalf. So up here in Walsh County, our focus is on uh, underage drinking, intervening variable being high social access and community norms, uh, and the local condition uh, being alcohol being purchased for minors and a culture of alcohol, really. Um, this quarter, the things we've been working on, um, one of which has been supporting the uh, alcohol free events in the community, primarily with our, our proms that went on. And we were able to support four different uh, uh, after prom parties um, and then do some press afterwards, thanking the example on the side here being what went out to the papers. And of course they had to uh, have a policy in place um, in order to receive this funding and then uh, hand out the materials that we wanted to have handed out. So we, we were able to distribute some not in my house uh, materials as well. Um, in conjunction with National Alcohol Awareness Month, we did some radio ads uh, with the basketball and hockey tournaments that were going on here um, during April. Um, there were a lot of impressions on social media. I don't I don't think this probably means 180,000 residents, considering we don't have that many here in uh, good old Walsh County. Um, but uh, that was the impressions that we had on social media as we uh, sent out some of the ads here and, and you know, did things from NIH and whatever else uh, we could get our hands on for that. Uh, two of the nurses, and you see Joelle is right here, along with Sharon, who's our tobacco prevention specialist. Uh, uh, went out to the Grafton School Carnival and, and did some uh, uh, promo of stuff out there. Uh, Joelle also did a Facebook Live. And, you know, for, for a guy who's 45 years old, it's nice to have uh, the younger generation on board. Uh, we'll just whip out the phone and do a Facebook Live, right, uh, you know, as they're at the event there. Um, and then you can see Sharon over here is, is actually wearing the, uh, I guess you call them drunk goggles and walk in the line there. And that was a, a pretty major draw 
for lots of people to visit the uh, booth. And of course, we were able to hand out parents lead stuff, not in my house information as well. So um, it was a, a pretty positive uh, event there. Just a little bit more on social media um, stuff that we did um, for National Prevention Week. Um, some of the examples that we put up here. Um, some other just general posts that we put up. And then uh, we had pictures of each of us of our, our reason why um, we, we are in favor of limited uh, alcohol consumption. So um, just another way to uh, promote our messaging and uh, to put a personal touch on it as well. So our uh, health department staff was uh, good sports and all of it there. Uh, and then lastly, um, we continue to have you know coalition meetings as well. And uh, was talked about, I think it was staff actually that brought this up, so I, I love to hear that, but that's an idea that I took from the administrators meeting, uh, the SACIO meeting as well, is to uh, collaborate with Vision Zero. So Joelle has been in touch with them already um, about getting them up here, potentially some things um, with Grafton Summerfest, which typically has been an event for us that can be a little problematic as far as underage drinking goes, especially the street dance stuff. Um, so we're working with local agencies here and also Safe Kids Grand Forks to try to have something um, going on in conjunction with Summerfest activities. Originally we thought, oh, you know, we should do something in the evening. And then we thought, well, wait, if we're like doing something in the evening and we're close to the street dance, we don't want to be another reason for young people to come out to the street dance and potentially uh, get into trouble. So we're, we're going to focus more on during the day, um, those types of activities, especially as we want to get parents and kids involved together. Um, additionally, Joelle just sent out a survey to collect data on family activities in our county here, another way to pursue opportunities for alcohol free events that would involve parents and children together. That's something that our coalition really started talking about in regards to substance abuse and involvement of parents and uh, parents setting the example of having fun while not needing alcohol or substances. So that is it for Walsh County. Great, doing lots of stuff as well. That's great to see you. Really, all of you guys are doing such a great job and I won't keep you any longer since we're very far over um, on our time. Was there any last minute questions or comments anybody had? Um, as usual, we'll follow up with an email with the recording and we can give you some information in there as, long, as well as the presentation. So if you haven't yet sent Tom or me your presentation, please do so so we can get those out to you guys. And as always, let us know if you have any questions or want to meet with us on an individual basis. Thank you. Yeah, no, no questions. You're free to go. I won't take up any more time. <laughs> have a good rest of your week, everyone. Bye.